Hello, this is Thomas Adrianson with NCSI, and today I'll be showing you how to create a filtered list of vendor contacts in Avanti Neurons for ITSM. I'll also demonstrate some additional options for adding a new contact to the vendor directly from the incident form. As you can see here, I have a vendor dropdown on my incident form that shows up when I'm in waiting for third party, as well as a filtered list of vendor contacts for the selected vendor. In addition, I have an add new vendor contact directly on the incident form. To start, we need to create a couple of fields on the incident business object. So in incident fields, we're going to create a field to store the vendor. This will be a validated list using the vendor list pick list. And then we're going to add a field to store the vendor contact as well. This one will also be validated, but we don't have the validation list yes, yet, so we'll build that validation list now and then come back and populate that. So we'll head over to pick lists and we're going to create a new pick list. We're going to call this display name of external contact by vendor. Our business object is going to be external contact. We want to show the display name. The display name is going to be the value. And we're going to sort by the display name as well. Now we need to add a constraint, so I'm going to back out of it and then I'm going to go back to it so that it loads those fields correctly. And the constraint we're going to put in here, we're actually going to type instead of using this drop down. So you're going to do an open bracket vendor hash dot rev to close your bracket name. Now, this is referencing the relationship between vendor and external contact. And then it's going to be looking for a validated field. So we're going to type in here as well. I'm going to do open bracket validation list, close bracket, and then vendor. This will be the field. Uh, that it is keying off of. <clears throat> you can choose to auto select this if it only has a single value, if you would like. Now, on business objects incident, we can go back and we can set that vendor contact to be our validated contacts list. So, display name external by. Vendor, we'll save that, and then we'll add these fields to the form. So in our layout, we're going to bring our vendor over here and our vendor contact over here. Let's clean this up a little bit. So we're going to set this to 25, which is the same size. Our visible expression, we only want this to show up when its status is in waiting for third party. And we'll do the same thing. We'll set the style to right label. And then we'll do the same thing for the vendor contact. Now, when we go into our incident and we set this to waiting for third party, our vendor and vendor contact drop downs become available. And we can see that Ryan is the only contact in the NCSI list. Uh, there was another one in there that didn't validate to any vendor, so that's why we only saw, we saw the one because we selected the 
option to auto select if there was only one and we have one external contact being me uh, that's not associated with the vendor so maybe don't select that on your pick list <clears throat> now if we want to have additional contacts you can go into your vendor workspace you can add in additional contacts Once you refresh this, you'll have your filtered list there. <clears throat> now, keep in mind that, that relationship is only looking at these additional contacts. So uh, if you have a primary contact that is listed here, uh, it won't pick that up. Uh, we can put in a rule that if you link a new primary contact here, it automatically adds them to the additional contacts, or you can manually add them uh, there. So to add the primary contact to the additionals, we can do a quick business object there. In the vendor business object, we can do a trigger. contact to additional contacts we can say on link of vendor associated external contact we can do a search and link on the relationship of profile vendor associated profile external contact and we can do where external contact rec ID is equal to primary contact link. And so now if I were to link myself as the primary contact and save that we'll see that I also show up in the additional contacts here which means it's now available for me to select on that incident. Now if we want to be able to add a new contact directly from the incident form we need to do a couple of other things uh, so in that vendor business object we're going to want to unhide the rec ID and then in the employee business object pardon me the incident business object we want to create a field to store the vendor rec ID We'll also want to create that field on external contact. And then back on incident, we're going to want to create a business rule. So this will be an editing rule on change of vendor. We want to set the vendor rec ID. We're going to set this to the rec ID that we unhid on the vendor object. So now when the vendor is changed we're going to capture that vendor rec id and we're going to use that in the business rule 
an external contact to link the vendor uh, to that person. <clears throat> so back on external contact. We're going to do a business rule. This would be a trigger rule. We'll call it link vendor. And we're going to say on initialize or update of the field vendor rec ID. We want to do a search and link. On the relationship profile vendor, sales profile external contact, where vendor rec ID is equal to Okay, now we need to build the actual button on incident that will create that function. So on incident, we're going to have quick actions. And we're going to create a new action, which is insert object. We'll do create new vendor contact relationship. Here, the business object here is going to be external contact, and we're going to enter first name. We want the last name. We want the option for phone number, and we're going to want the option for email. So on this, we're going to do a prompt where we're asking for first name. We can default it to nothing. Use the out of the box, the standard height and width, false and then true to make it required. We do the same thing on last name. And then on the phone number and email, we only need those to be optional. We're going to say prompt phone. That's all you need to do on that. And then prompt email. And then the last thing we need to do here is populate that vendor. It's just going to be. Save here. And then on our incident layout, we can add a command button, or you can have this in the toolbar or just in menu, uh, but we can add it to the form here. We're going to choose the action to create a new vendor contact. The label is set to add a new vendor contact. And we want this to be visible when the status is in waiting for third party. We also want to make sure that vendor is null because we need that vendor rec ID and vendor is not equal to So now we have our add new vendor contact button because vendor is not blanked out. Uh, we can click on this and we're going to be prompted for our external contact information. And once we hit OK,
the reason that didn't work is because we aren't actually populating the vendor record ID because we created that field after So if we just set this to something else, then it's set back. And we're creating a contact. Now we've got the tag available right there uh, immediately after we create. So that is how you would create a vendor, a filtered vendor contact dropdown based on the selected vendor, as well as adding new contacts directly from the incident. Thank you for watching.